Welcome to the third episode in Tales of Old Russia. Today we'll be talking about stories of St. Basil's Cathedral. The cathedral was built by Tsar Ivan the Terrible, who came of age in 1547, and one of the first orders of business was to declare war against the Khanate of Kazan. Now, the Khanate of Kazan was one of the successor states which emerged from the Mongol Empire when it collapsed during the 1400s, along with the Crimean Khanate, Astrakhan, and of course the Kazan Khanate. Kazan Khanate financed itself largely by constant slave raids throughout what is today Russia, Poland, and the Baltic states. From 1450 to 1700, a total of as many as 2 million Christian Europeans were ripped from their homes, marched across the steppe, and loaded onto ships along the coast of the Black Sea. There they were shipped sometimes to Islamic caliphates in Africa, but they were also sent to Christian kingdoms in Sicily and the Madeira Islands, where they worked sugar plantations that would become prototypes for the much larger coffee, sugar, and cotton plantations that dotted North and South America. So obviously, Tsar Ivan the Terrible wants to staunch the bleeding, and a great step forward in that regard would be taking Kazan Fortress, the center of the Kazan Khaganate. After taking the throne, he made two attempts to take the fortress, and both of them failed. He was determined that the third time would be the charm. First, he built fortresses along his route so that he could keep his army well supplied. And when his army reached the walls of Kazan Fortress, the defenders showed their contempt for the Russian troops by lifting up their caftans, sticking their bare bottoms at the Russian army, and letting out a trumpet blast of flatulence. The Russian troops, who fervently believed in magic and witchcraft, worried that they had just been bewitched, along with being sent a really bad smell. And indeed, when terrible storms began lashing the Russian army, it looked as if the Kazan Khan's troops had literally farted up a storm. So Tsar Ivan sent his best men back to Moscow to fetch a piece of the True Cross, which served as part of the Tsar's coronation regalia. Now, the Tsar's cannons were not able to blow through the walls, though once the storm stopped, they could at least fire. So Tsar Ivan had an idea. Instead of trying to blow a hole through the walls with his cannons, he instead had his men tunnel underground. They dug a tunnel from their camp to just under the fortress walls. They put a bunch of gunpowder inside, lit a match, and then ran like there was no tomorrow. Of course, the fortress walls blew up and Tsar Ivan sent his troops forward. While he remained in his tent praying to holy icons for victory, his troops were able to overwhelm Kazan Fortress and delivered it to their Tsar who entered in glory. Being a pious man, Tsar Ivan credited his victory to God and set out to honor him appropriately. First, he built this icon, which portrayed Tsar Ivan the Terrible taking Kazan Fortress. You'll notice that as his troops are marching towards the walls, that the angels are watching from overhead, blessing his troops as they go forward. It's also worth noting that the spirits of former Tsars are also watching down from heaven and no doubt nodding in approval as their descendant brings great glory to the empire and keeps the peasants from being hauled off. With this great victory over the slaver's fort, Tsar Ivan also set out to build a great cathedral to honor his victory and honor God for giving it to him. It was built in the traditional Russian tent style, with a 150-foot-tall central nave surrounded by nine chapels. According to tradition, the onion domes were so beautiful to Ivan's eyes that he ordered the eyes of the architect, Postnik Barma, to be put out so that he could build nothing so beautiful ever again and that he would have the greatest church in the world. The nine chapels surrounding the central nave were dedicated to saints and feast days that were linked in one way or another to the Kazan campaign. They include chapels dedicated to the protecting veil of Mary, the entry into Jerusalem, Saints Cyprian and Ustina, the Holy Trinity, Saint Nicholas, Saint Gregory of Armenia, Saint Barlam, Saint Alexander, and the three patriarchs. 
The vivid colors that we tend to associate with the cathedral today did not come about until the 1600s, almost a century after Tsar Ivan the Terrible. And the colors themselves were inspired by descriptions of the Kingdom of Heaven found in the Book of Revelation. Today, St. Basil's Cathedral is the centerpiece of Red Square, which is the center of Russian life and has been since the 1400s. It covers 800,000 square feet, along with forts, cathedrals, the Kremlin, and today a number of museums. However, this doesn't answer the question of how St. Basil's Cathedral got its name. Indeed, it's had a number of names over the years, including the Cathedral of the Intercession and the Cathedral of the Intercession of the Virgin on the Moat and even Prakovsky Cathedral. Ultimately, it was named after a holy fool named Basil the Blessed. Basil the Blessed was born in 1468 to a peasant family who sent him to a cobbler to serve as an apprentice. And one day a merchant came in and ordered a pair of fancy boots so elaborate that they would take a year to make. Basil warned the rich man that he would not live long enough to collect his boots, and indeed, the rich merchant died just a few days later. This is another example of the Russian folk belief that the rich only become rich by being parasitic and corrupt and breaking family bonds, while being poor is actually seen as a sign of virtue. And indeed, St. Basil would make himself very poor indeed. He renounced his worldly goods after the miracle and walked barefoot through the snow for months to reach Moscow. There he began the Holy Fool's tradition of speaking truth to power. By the way, a Holy Fool in the Russian Orthodox tradition is simply a man who renounces his worldly goods and goes out into the world. And by purifying himself, he's able to gain wisdom, prophecy, and even perform miracles. One particular act that St. Basil the Blessed was known for was standing outside the houses of rich men when they were holding lavish parties and weeping. And when the rich men came outside to ask what was wrong, he answered that he was weeping because they were destroying their souls by squandering their gold on cake and wine while the poor needed bread and water. And he urged them to give to the poor instead of giving to themselves. There is another story of a miracle performed by St. Basil when a rich merchant built a church, well, attempted to build a church to try and convince people he was a good and pious man when in fact that was not the case. His church kept falling down and he asked St. Basil for help. St. Basil advised him to seek the advice of John the Cripple, and when the merchant arrived in Kiev, he found John the Cripple lamenting and mourning the death of his mother. This prompted the merchant to remember his own mother, whom he had cast out of his house. He went to his mother, begged her forgiveness, let her back into his house, and then he was able to complete his church. This is another example of the Russian folk belief that the rich are all but intrinsically corrupt. St. Basil the Blessed was also one of the few people who dared to speak hard truths to the Tsar himself. Indeed, there is one story about Tsar Ivan the Terrible standing during one of the three-hour Orthodox Church services. And St. Basil the Blessed could tell that Ivan was thinking about his palace instead of God. And he approached the Tsar and scolded him in front of all his subjects. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, Tsar Ivan held St. Basil in great reverence and indeed visited the saint upon his deathbed in 1552, later allowing him to be buried on church grounds. In time, St. Basil's cathedral would include a shrine to the holy fool where his devotees prayed to him and some even reported miracles like the restoration of sight to the blind and the crippled being able to walk again. And that is the story of how St. Basil's Cathedral got its name. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked what you saw, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, please leave it in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.